Some of the key transboundary climate action risks for Africa are, for example, drought, which is very prevalent in the Horn of Africa, and flooding, which we see largely in the Southern Africa as a result of the cyclones. The risks to adaptation are tied to, for example, poverty, which is prevalent throughout the continent. And the reason why this now becomes a challenge is because now communities when this risk come are not able to effectively adapt. And this eventually is compounded by other risks like development, access to energy, markets. So the African content then becomes paralyzed because we are unable to better prepare for risks that most of the Western world is able to adapt to easily. African continent has to begin to move from planning from the impacts of the climate that uh, we are seeing now to begin to anticipate, look at the science to understand what this different changes means for the different sectors, what it means for trade, what it means for agriculture, what does it mean for the cropping zones, what does it mean for temperature, health. We need to begin to invest in the capacity to not only deal with the risks that we are now, because we're constantly in emergency mode, but to begin to think about what is coming 10 years, 25 years from now. Africa being the most vulnerable, it requires to build resilience of its economies and its people. Now, from the Africa group of negotiators' perspective, we generate and collect evidence on the transboundary and cascading climate risks so that we are able to share with the policymakers and decision makers so that they are able to see how they can integrate them in the policies, but also it can inform in the actions that they take. West Africa is one of the most vulnerable regions in the world. As a regional body, we plan to support our countries, which are all ratified the Paris Agreement. So to support them, we need to have an instrument at the regional level to coordinate and ensure that our action will be efficient. So that's why in 2022, in coordination, in consultation with all the countries in the region, with the involvement of all the regional institutions, we develop a regional climate strategy, which come along with an action plan. When it comes to climate change, adaptation, mitigation, risk management uh, within the basin, we have so many levers and rakes that feeds into the Lake Victoria. As Lake Victoria Basin Commission, we do some assessment. We have uh, basin climate change policy and strategy, and we have uh, Lake Victoria Basin uh, climate change master plan. And it highlights all the key areas that need to be addressed. For East Africa as a continent, what we're beginning to see, especially for a fragile context, is an increase in human security that is impacting national security. So as we begin to even anticipate our climate risks, we have to begin to think about responding holistically, meaning anticipating the rural to urban migration, for example, that we're seeing because the youth are unemployed because the drought is impacting livestock livelihoods. So we have to begin to bring in people that we don't traditionally work with. The, the ministries of defense, for example, that have been left on the, out of the climate conversation for a long time, the development partners need to begin to work across the board, work in fragile areas. And largely we need to begin as a horn to have kind of a one government approach meaning ministries of planning need to be at the center, ensuring that our development plans for every sector are taking into consideration a holistic view in terms of how climate is going to impact how we construct our roads, for example, how we plan our trade systems, and eventually how this is interconnected. For me, it's also about economy and humanity. And of course, you cannot address each of these in segments and the human being needs so many issues to be secured. Human development realm is composed of ensuring that water is secure, you have food security, you have environmental security, you have social and all other issues that makes life comfortable. We 
are gathered here to discuss and implement a vision that appears in Africa's climate change and resilient development strategy. And there is a very bold vision in that strategy and action plan to enhance cooperation between the regional economic communities and member states to manage the cascading and transboundary climate risks that Africa faces. What are some of the next steps towards achieving that vision by 2032? And we look forward to working with actors from across all different communities and constituencies towards achieving that aim.